Welcome back to the weekly news roundup. This is the Linux edition. These are recorded live Fridays, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you want to catch the show live, come on and check us out. Then you can interact with the chatters and the commenters on a variety of different hosts. Of course, we host these on YouTube, uh, Odyssey, Rumble, and uh, we also stream to Twitch and DLive. And the videos will go up on BitChute eventually as well. So with that, let's go ahead and dive right on into the Linux news. First up, there is a Windows malware that is evolving to target Linux systems. See, evolution is true. The malware is evolving. The malware is evolving. It just takes a creator to do it. Okay. Well, this is the Malix malware. It is targeting Linux systems. New version is called Malix Linux 1.0. Recently discovered by cybersecurity researchers in Sentinel Labs after Mal uh, Malix operators mistakenly leaked their tools. Whoops. Uh, it's a good thing that criminals are still stupid. All right. So it seems Malix did. Now it seems Malix did since the new variant uses Cryptina's source code, the same encryption mechanism, and the same decryption routines. Furthermore, it uses the same command line builder and configuration parameters. Uh, therefore, the developers only changed the name and the appearance of the encryptor. They removed any mention of Cryptina from the documents and anything else left unchanged. Isn't it scary that this malware is probably more? Uh, documented than Joomla 4. <laughs> we were talking about that last night. All right, so uh, nowhere on potential victims, but their analyses uh, from Kapersky Labs. Look at that. Kapersky Labs is still doing good things for the world. Man, I don't know. Um, they must be uh, they must be people with morality and integrity. The fact that the Western world is trying to kick them off of the systems, yet uh, they're still out there doing the hard work and telling us about malware. So... Um, anyway, uh, just be aware that there is some new malware. I didn't they like, they didn't see any cases of it being actively used. Um, and as you can tell, Linux news was very weak this week. Um, there is an update to chaos. This was good. Um, Caligra, I guess was not being maintained for a while and it is back to being maintained, updated with the KDE six framework. And, uh, so they are now, uh, of course, chaos, if you're unfamiliar with it, it's a plasma based system, which uses all applications are explicitly, uh, the QT framework. They don't have any other GTK way to keep the thing a little bit streamlined. So all applications packed within it are all QT software. So there is a way to get uh, LibreOffice working with the QT framework. And so that's what they've had in the past. But since Caligra is a an official KDE application, they've decided to go back to that. But like the Manjaro approach, not wanting to have too much controversy, they are giving the option to choose which one of these um, office suites you would like to install on, um, on your installation. So that's actually good. Other updates. It's just relating to the upgrades to KDE plasma still at six, one, uh, six, two. I mean, I heard six, two was coming out, but I downloaded a development edition of neon. Didn't see it in there. I didn't uh, get a chance to do fedora. I think was it maybe fedora and open Susa. I think you could see it. And I thought neon too, but uh, but they are still running the 6.1.5 desktop environment, and there's a few other options there. So if you do like the KDE framework, Chaos Linux might be a good option for you in that respect. And uh, Linux boots, uh, takes Linux 4.76 days to boot on the Intel 4004. Uh, this is a processor, one of the early Intel processors used for simply running calculators. I believe it was calculators. And uh, this thing is absolutely amazing. It has 740 amazing kilohertz processor. And uh, it is from 1971. I don't even know what type of RAM this thing had here. Uh, but they took Debian. They streamlined it down. They did have to run some virtualization since there's a lot of things, even like conditional um, uh, and and if statements don't work on the system. So they had to do some degree of virtualization. But with enough time, the hobbyist slash hacker was able to get Linux working on the Intel 4004. 
It did take 4.76 days to boot up, and then just listing a directory took another couple days, I think. Uh, so definitely not your usable system, but uh, certainly something really fun. He did mention here that if you happen to have one of these, he is going to make some of the um, information, the schematics and stuff available on his website. So if you are interested in that kind of stuff, you can go ahead and have a look at his website. And that's just a lot of fun, isn't it? On to our last one today. This is the critical cups vulnerability exposes Linux and other systems to remote attacks. So the big problem here is that a lot of your Linux distributions, including the Linux Mint that I use, it enables the cups finder uh, by default. There's a specific name for that. Sorry, my brain has turned into mush. Um, so the cups browsed is the specific name of it. So when you connect it, the Linux computer to the network, it starts browsing around the network looking for printers. So I've told the story before at one of the conferences that I go to every year down in South Carolina. Uh, they, the, the, whoever runs their IT over there needs fired or something. I don't know. Um, or at least, uh, at least flogged a little bit, maybe um, 39 times, maybe. They have put like 400 printers on their network. And then that's the network they give us for using the internet while we're there. So you log in on Linux Mint. And the first year I did that a couple years ago, I had a never ending stream of found a printer, found a printer, found a printer, found a printer. I so want to be like, let's go ahead and write a script write a document and say, this is a bad idea and send it to all of them. But being the whole Christian organization, I just didn't think it was the Christian thing to do. So I didn't do that. But um, the, you should not do that. Of course, the new Linux Mint, it still runs cups browsed, but it will only give you like a single notification instead of a notification for every one of the printers it finds. The problem we have here is that there are a series of vulnerabilities inside of this that allows a person to run a malicious print, uh, basically a malicious printer. And if the end user goes to print a document and prints to that malicious printer, then the person gets in there and is able to tinker around and do a lot of weird stuff in your system, basically do remote code execution and take control of your system all by the fact that your computer automatically logs into the system um, connects to the printer, sets up the printer, and now it's available to as a print source. So if it goes in and does this and then you go in and go to print a document, you might be printing to malware. So the best fix for this until everything is totally patched is to simply disable uh, cups browsed. So uh, if you enable that, of course, it will look around. And here you can see the most impacted Korea, then United States, then Germany, Hong Kong, and China. And let's see, down at the bottom, they have the recommendations, mitigation strategies, disable cups browsed. So you can disable this application, prevent cups browsed from starting on system reboot. So it will give you the command here. Uh, so system control, stop cups browsed. Uh, pseudo system control disable cups browsed and then uh, this works on UDP port 631 so if you have control over your router you might want to block traffic on 631 that allows all of these printers to work on the internet yay we need internet ready printers okay like w why okay you are think about the logic of this you have a device you are connecting it to a printer that is not even in your physical location. Now, I understand you're working remotely at home and you're into the VPN, so you have the printer, and if your boss needs to report, you can push the print and print it to his, his station. Okay, that's an application of this, uh, this internet-based printing. But more often than not, it is being marketed to consumers to say, hey, look at this. You can print the document. It'll be waiting for you when you get home. Why not just wait until you're home to print the document? I mean, really? So, you know, that's the thing. Uh, as soon as there is an update for Cups Browse, you should go ahead and install that. Uh, so Red Hat acknowledged it. Canonical has um, acknowledge the system. So, uh, these are, uh, this is a pretty serious bug. This is a bad, bad bug. And, uh, if you do have that system, uh, turned on, uh, you should probably turn it off so that people cannot um, connect to your printer. If you happen to go to like a, a Starbucks or something and you 
connect in because I, I could literally just sit there, create a print server and a virtualization device, sit in Starbucks, deploy this thing on the network and anybody else using this software could get in there and I could be like, oh, there's a printer here. They actually print to the printer and I have taken over control of their system. So there you go. Uh, that is what is up with that. That is a pretty serious bug. Uh, so keep an eye out for all of the mitigation strategies. Well, if you want to help support the channel, we do have a Patreon page, patreon.com slash T-O-M-M. And uh, just an update, we should have the short story up. Um, I'm going to shoot for tomorrow. Uh, I did record all of the uh, audiobook files. I just need to edit them now. Uh, we do have the text all ready to go. We are just about set. I just need to get the time. So it depends on how I'm feeling tomorrow. Uh, but we will get that up uh, as soon as we can. And then we'll get ready uh, and working on the next story for next month. And then Co-Red, of course, should still be out in roughly a week or two. Um, I will, uh, uh, hopefully by next week, I will have everything all finalized for that. So I wanted to try and do that this week. But yeah, I just got hit by a ton of bricks of uh, not feeling well. And so, yeah, I'm just like, never mind. <laughs> Doing the bare minimums right now. So anyway, with that, uh, patreon.com slash T-O-M-M. Of course, you can also support on some subscribe star and locals as well. Thanks for watching. And I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.